how do i balance my lifestyle with my diabetes needs it's all okay for some retired person who's sitting at home who has all the time to look after his or her diabetes but i am a busy person in the management of diabetes you take four pillars the first pillar is diet control the second pillar is exercise the third pillar is education fourth pillar is medicines of course medicines are very important we take away the fourth pillar sitting is the new smoking earlier we used to say that if you smoke you will get cancer you will get heart attack all kinds of other diseases that you can name sitting produces all of this can you imagine it will increase your weight your sugar will increase you are increasing your risk of heart attacks so you may say so what should i do lifestyle becomes very very important do you want a cheat day cheat but cheat proportionately don't cheat so much hello everyone welcome to the next video in my channel about diabetes in this video i am going to talk about something which is very very important very practical and very common which all of you face and it's a question which comes to me regularly so people tell me doctor it's all very nice you're telling us follow diet go for exercise do this do that and all that it's all okay for some retired person who's sitting at home who has all the time to look after his or her diabetes but i am a busy person i am working how do i balance this my lifestyle with my diabetes needs it's not that i can divorce the two and say no no work time i'll do something my diabetes is coming with me to work so how do i do that it is a genuine problem and it's not an easy or one size fits all kind of solution which i can give you for example if you're doing one week night duty and another week day duty and it keeps changing like that week to week your lifestyle has to change so it's not easy but having said that there are certain things certain tips which i'd like to give you at the workplace which will help you not only to keep your sugar under control your diabetes under control but also improve your health so what are these tips number 1 today they say that sitting is the new smoking so what does it mean earlier we used to say that if you smoke you will get cancer you will get heart attack you will get uh, all kinds of uh, gangrene and all kinds of other diseases that you can name you will get if you smoke sitting produces all of this can you imagine it will increase your weight your obesity levels will increase your blood pressure will increase your sugar will increase you are increasing your risk of heart attacks so you may say so what should i do not sit at all well there are people doing that actually they use tables to stand they don't use chairs at all they do walk the talk so all uh, talks are you know around a uh, you know uh, hall you go and as you walk you talk and finish your meetings those are little extreme they are good to say and they are good to show in a video show or in a movie and so on practical life it's not very easy to do when sitting is bad what do you do why don't you try getting up every hour for a minute or two okay when you finish one hour either you go to the toilet or you drink some water or you just change the subject you know what not only it will break that sedentarism which is one of the major causes of all lifestyle diseases but also give you that movement and more importantly your brain after one or two hours is going to get fatigued when you just get up change the scene and come back you're coming back with renewed energy with new spirit and you can actually perform better breaking that sitting habit at least once in every hour for one or two minutes is very important some people say i am going for my walk in the morning so why should i worry about this 
sedentarism. So that brings me to exercise. Yes, your morning walk or evening walk, whichever is convenient for you. It can be a walk, it can be a jog, it can be a swim, it can be a game, it can be badminton, it can be tennis, it can be anything that you want. It can be dance, it can be anything that you want. But movement is very important for the human body and it should be regular. So if you do that, to some extent that sedentarism you're getting rid of. But let me tell you that even if you've done a one hour walk in the morning, if eight hours you're going to sit without getting up and without stretching yourself, without moving about, it is an independent risk factor for heart and for diabetes. So apart from doing that morning walk or evening walk, you must still break that sitting habit. Number three, I don't have to tell you about bad habits. If you have diabetes and you smoke, you might as well not control your diabetes. Because smoking is going to kill you in more than one way. Either by getting heart attacks, or by producing blocks in your arteries, or by producing cancer. It also makes your blood pressure high, and it makes your sugar also go high. So for a diabetic patient, somebody with heart, who has diabetes, smoking is a strict no, no. And there's no compromise in that. What about alcohol? That also comes under lifestyle. Well, alcohol, you can't be as strict as I was with smoking and tell you no, no. Why is that? Because there are some studies, limited studies, of course, which show that maybe, maybe a small amount of alcohol may be beneficial for you. But you know what? Those studies come from France and it's using red wine. It's in southern France, Bordeaux, and that's where these studies have come from. Maybe for the French people, the red wine grown in France may be useful. Has anybody shown that that same red wine is useful in India? So far, no. Unfortunately, the studies that we did, large collaborative studies across various industries, when we did an industrial cohort study, we found that alcohol is actually bad. So if you ask me, better to avoid alcohol, or if you take it, very small quantities infrequently. Everyday drinking is bad. Binge drinking even on a weekend is bad. So an occasional social drink is probably okay. Next, we come to sleep. I've talked about sleep in one of my videos. Going to bed on time, sleeping six to eight hours a day, roughly at the same time, if possible. I know you'll immediately tell me, no, no, but I have night shift. What can I do about that? At least in the daytime, try to get. Or, even for such people, keep that regular. During the night duty time, I will do this way. During the day duty time, I'll follow that pattern. At least the brain will know, oh, there are two patterns here, and I'll adjust to both those patterns. So that at least you try to make regular. Don't make it irregularly regular like some of our pulses, irregularly irregular, we call it. Don't do that, then your brain will get totally confused and your chronobiology will be totally upset. So sleep is also very important. Diet, you cannot overemphasize the importance of diet. What you eat, how much you eat, at what time you eat, the speed at which you eat, all are very important. So it's not that, oh, I've cut down my portion size, but it's okay. What is there in that portion size? That is also very important. So each one of these, and there are videos where I'm talking extensively about diet. Please watch some of those videos, which will tell you all that you need to know about diet. But let me underscore the fact that without some healthy eating, mindful eating and healthy eating, there is no treatment for diabetes at all because the first pillar in the management of diabetes, you take four pillars. The first pillar is diet control or healthy eating or medical nutrition therapy as we call it. The second pillar is exercise. The third pillar is education, understanding the importance of one and two. And only the fourth pillar is medicines. Of course, medicines are very important. If we take away the fourth pillar, the whole building will collapse. But the first pillar is diet and the second pillar is exercise and therefore lifestyle becomes very very important the most disciplined person lives the longest and has the healthiest and happiest life this is what i have learned 
in my life after 50 years of working as a doctor. Many of my patients, believe it or not, have celebrated their 100th birthday. Not after they got diabetes in their 99 and then they became 100. They got it when they were 30 years old or 40 years old and then lived for 60, 70 years and crossed their 100th birthday. Many have now completed 100 years of age. Almost considered impossible because the average lifespan of an Indian male is 67 years and for females it is 69 years. This is people without diabetes. When their lifespan is like that, talking about a person with diabetes who got it when it was 30, 40 years old and now celebrating 100th year of his or her life is no mean achievement. I'm sure you'll all agree with me. Why am I telling you this? Because they hold the secrets of longevity, of happiness, of healthy life. So we've interviewed them, the press has interviewed them and asked them, what did you do? Were you all, what, marathon runners? And they said, not one of them has run a marathon, not one of them has done competitive sports. But all of them had been doing some physical activity. Maybe be a 30 minute walk, just a brisk walk. That's all they did. And they lived up to 100 years. I am a young boy. No way to volleyball. Then some other, I know some other media people asked them, have you ever eaten a sweet in your life? They said, are you joking? I do eat sweets once in a way. It's not that I've never eaten a sweet, but I've been observing my diet in moderation. Moderation is the key. Whatever you do, do in moderation. Very often my patients come and ask me, it's very easy for you to say, doctor, but we have diabetes, you don't have diabetes. So you will tell us don't eat sweets. I said, I never tell you not to eat sweets. I am telling you do it in moderation. Do you want a cheat day? There's another tip for you. You want a cheat day? Cheat on a Sunday. Okay? But again, how much you cheat on a Sunday? Don't buy a whole box of, uh, you know, uh, gulab jamun and finish it on that Sunday because this is my cheat day. Have one gulab jamun if you like or if it's badam halwa that you like, take a small portion of it. I love it by the way. So, if you really want to have a cheat day, cheat but cheat proportionately. Don't cheat so much that your whole week's next whole week's uh, thing is gone because you cheated so much. But human beings are like that. We need little encouragement. We need little cheat days. We are not all saints who follow a strict rule and so on. But having said that, if you have no discipline at all, if you don't go for your walk, you don't get up in the morning, you don't do your exercise, you don't do your yoga, you don't do your pranayama. Most important thing I think of all this is pranayama. Because it's that breathing that you do which keeps you healthy, it keeps you happy, it keeps you tension free. It definitely reduces the sugar and the blood pressure. Yogic exercises are also very good. It keeps you flexible. In one of my videos, I've talked about the FAR principle. F-A-R. What is this FAR principle? F stands for flexibility. You must be able to rotate your body so that it remains flexible and supple. This will prevent you from falling when you grow older. A stands for aerobics. And aerobics is walking, jogging, dancing, running, swimming, you name it. Any games that you play where oxygen is burnt. So that is called aerobics. And what is R? R is resistance training. You have small weights. It can be just a bottle of water, you know, which you take. Or it can be dumbbells. It can be anything. Small weights for your biceps, for your triceps, and then squats and sitting up, push-ups, pull-ups. All this builds your shoulder muscles, your pectoral muscles, your thigh muscles, and makes you strong. If you have strong muscles, then insulin resistance comes down, your blood pressure comes down, and you can prevent heart attacks, and keep your diabetes under control. As you grow older, something happens. Your muscle tends to go away and it gets replaced by fat. We call that a sarcopenia. And that is the basis for most diseases which occur in old age. These people I told you about who lived up to 100 years of age, they did not have sarcopenia because they've looked after themselves. They've been doing gentle exercises. They've been exercising not just their body but also their mind. And therefore, they did not develop dementia. They kept their mind, it's like a gym for the mind. They've been doing puzzles, crosswords, sudoku, chess they played, something they did. They kept adding things, they kept writing things, 
So keep your mind and body active and healthy. And you should start this not when you are 40, 50, 60 years old. Start it when you are 20 years old. When you get your first job or you are just out of college, that is the time when you tend to put on weight. So if we start a regular routine then, let me assure you that not just diabetes, but none of the lifestyle diseases that are killing people today will affect you or your family. So wish you all the very best and hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. Thank you for watching.